Hi, my name is Faye Linda Wax and I'm a professor of sociology at Cal Poly Pomona. This is my introductory video to the role of sport and sport media in the culture wars. We're going to start with some basic vocabulary to make sure we're all on the same page. Culture generally refers to values, ideas, practices, material objects, and other things that have meaning to a group or society. Values refer to generalized abstract ideals or standards that a culture or society holds. It's really important when looking at sports and sports media to look at how values are reflected in things like funding priorities. Norms are informal rules that guide what people do and how they live. Norms are reinforced through sanctions, with punishment being negative sanction and rewards being positive sanctions. Folkways are norms that are relatively unimportant and we don't do much to enforce. Mores are very important norms and violation results in severe sanction. Laws are norms that are codified or written down. Everyday culture are those languages, attitudes, beliefs that we engage with in our everyday life and that come to seem very normal to us or common sense. Language, and remember that language is anything that communicates clearly, not just spoken or written language is a critical and central element of culture. So now that we have some of the basics of culture, let's talk a little bit about why we might have culture wars. Antonio Gramsci observes that dominance, rule, or privilege is actually maintained through ideological or cultural means rather than coercion. We consent to be dominate rather than be coerced. His ideas are based on Marx's observation that the real the ruling ideas of any epoch are the ideas of the ruling class. Gramsci highlights how through culture, norms, common sense assumptions, and things like language, hegemony is transmitted. When we argue about symbols, we're actually arguing about cultural hegemony. What are the fundamental understandings about our society, about how things work? And there are important implications here about regarding power and privilege. Hegemony is not static, culture changes, but it's very important to remember that change is not inherently progressive. I'm always reminded of the Margaret Atwood quote, better never means better for everyone, it always means worse for some. In our current situation with cultural hegemony, it generally means better for those with the power to control ideological production rather than the most vulnerable. The culture wars are our battles over these ideological differences materialized as specific issues. They're often framed as traditional or conservative versus liberal or progressive, but it's very important to consider the role hegemony shapes in who has access to the field of play. Sports is a microcosm of society and a critical field of cultural production, so not surprisingly, we see the culture wars play out on the field of sports. There's been a lot of compelling research done on the different ways that sport has contributed to cultural hegemony, whether it's gender, sex, and patriarchy, the ideological production of docile workers and consumers, racial stratification, militarism, indoctrination for minoritized groups, non-white, immigrant, native, and indigenous peoples, among others, or heterosexism. Sport has been a key place where ideologies have been produced and circulated. Having a space where ideologies are produced, though, also allows you a space where ideologies can be contested as well. In referring to female athletes, Michael Messner referred to sports as contested ideological terrain. And in the culture wars, that's true on many different key social issues. Over time, as the stature of athletes has grown, sports provides this fascinating moment where people with different backgrounds and different ideological views are given the opportunity to present alternative views in the culture wars. For athletes and fans, sports remains a key area of contestation and an ongoing battlefield. Whether it's athletes like Althea Gibson or the Williams sisters challenging both racial and gendered stereotypes, Muhammad Ali challenging common conceptions about war, the anti-war movement and poverty, John Carlos and Tommy Smith speaking up against racism and poverty in America today, sports remains a critical area where people who aren't given a voice are often able to speak.
same time, institutions push back. Rule 50 from the IOC prohibits athletes from rendering any political statements. It reads, no kind of demonstration or political, religious, or racial propaganda is permitted in any Olympic sites, venues, or other areas. But this effectively prevents many people who have no other plat public platform from using the one they have. In the culture wars, not everyone has access to the means of cultural production. It's important to remember the ways in which athletes' voices are silenced by the institutions for which they work. Recent critical culture war moments include obviously Colin Kaepernick's ongoing protest against racial injustice and the prison industrial complex. In addition, women's soccer's ongoing fight for pay equity has been a critical moment as well. Looking at the ways different stakeholders use traditional and new forms of media in these ongoing culture wars within and throughout the larger social world and sports is going to be a fascinating area of study. It's important to remember though that while culture wars contest, they tend to contest within the system. So they tend to want to change relations of power and privilege within a system rather than offering a form of systemic change. The critical theorists ask us to pay careful attention to the ways that capital is self-perpetuating even within the debates that we're currently having and seen as enormous cultural divides. We need to start asking larger questions about the way the culture wars are segmenting us into predictable market demographics while at the same time perhaps stymieing real change. So at this critical moment, even as a much wider range of voices is being recognized and heard in sports, and that is much to celebrate, we also should consider all the different ways in which the system is being perpetuated despite our will toward progress.